Price, we are on. All right, we are on the live stream. We have started a few minutes late because I made the same mistake as last week. I started doing the live stream, but not actually starting it on YouTube, even though I was technically doing it. But anyway, look, today I've got two tracks in, one from Ramos, another one in from Pooks, um, and I've heard neither of them yet. I'm going to listen, uh, not first listen, first I'm going to do a random number generator on my phone um, between one and two. That will determine whether I'm picking Ramos's track to master today or Pooks. Haven't heard them. Once we've figured out what the random number generator tells us, then we'll have a listen through it. We'll start marking it up. We'll start working through it and making some decisions on how to bring this mix into a final master. And it's going to be really fun because, again, haven't heard it. It's going to be completely off the cuff and let's get to that. So, random number generator. Um, I've got my numbers dialed in one to two here. And basically, I'm going to generate a number between one and two. And it's generated the number one, which means we're going to be working with Ramos's track here, um, Fiction. So, haven't heard it yet. So, let's give it a first pass. Have a listen, start to end, and then get an idea of what we can do and how we would move forward with this track. Um, hey, Costa, see you in the comments there. And just for anybody watching, including you, Costa, any, th any questions you have, any things you want to ask during the period of this stream, feel free to do so, and I'll happily answer anything you have to come my way. So, let's play this track top to end. you out before I realized That's why my Sundays never feel right I'll need to pray for forgiveness When there's no one to forgive We called the quits before the race begun That way we couldn't see the fights to come Go east to stay in the fiction I failed to learn how to live How's it going to end? I guess we'll never grow enough to find out How's it going to end? One less time to explode before the night's out Before it's lights out How fucking cheeky was it when it dropped? I was not expecting that. That was, um, that caught me. That, that gave me like, that gave me an energy. It gave me a vibe. That was really cool. Wow. 
um, let me let me just let me just absorb that for a little bit right now because um, that was that was such a good tune. That was insane. Um, now, mastering engineer's perspective, like, what am I hearing? Well, I, I want people to get excited when they listen to this mix as a master. Um, and one thing which was incredible was that just the change up of pace and contrasting texture, especially in that drop. Like that was a real highlight for me. And I feel like that low end has to just really fill up a room when that hits. Like it, it just, not like in the sense of just cranking the line, but I mean the depth of the energy has to really like, has to just like get right into the souls of people when they, when it's listening. Cause that was um when people listen to the master. Cause um that was really good, really good. Um, an interesting thing to note as a side note is the way musically, now we're not talking technical mixing mastering terms here, but the pace changes. So when we go into that chorus, it, it, it feels more pacey, a little bit more staccato, a little bit more moving. And then prior to that, in your verses, especially in the intro, it's much more lush, fleshed out. And it's just good to be conscious of little things like that because when we're setting our compressors where we don't, we don't want to compromise anything at any stage, but observing little bits of information like that will feed into what we do later on. Now, something I have to do right now, sorry, I didn't mean to knock the mic there. Um, something I have to do is quickly pull this into audio editor to create some markers. And this, this is going to be rudimentary on these roulettes um, every Wednesday where I, I'm going to pull every mix into the audio editor because I need to know. I need to know exactly where my true peak levels are, where the loudest part of these songs are, and mark them in my session as reference points. So here we can see the true peak level is negative, is actually plus 3.3 uh, 3 decibels. At what point is it at? It is at 2 minutes and 40 seconds. Now, in a circumstance I get a mix like this, if there's audible clipping at that point, I will be um, telling a client, hey, you're going over zero and it's causing some clipping, which I'm not going to be able to reverse. Um, in this situation, we don't have that luxury. We're in a live stream. So I'm going to make a marker there and obviously gain it down to give myself some headroom to work with. So plus 0.28, which is plus 0.3 decibels there. So that's at 2 minutes and 40 seconds. Beautiful. Let's get that 2 minutes and 40 seconds. Boom. All right. So that's there and that's plus 0 0.3. And we'll gain stage to compensate that in a moment. Um, so now we've got that, that one dialed in. Let's go to the loudest part of the song, which is actually where that is exactly. Um, it's a 16.8 maximum short-term loudness there. Um, so that, 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 that's good to note. So both our markers lie on the same spot, which means I don't have to mark out two sections. I've got a little three second snippet cut and it's really important to understand how short term loudness is measured. It's measured in increments of moving three second windows. Um, so that's why I've got my um, grid set up in seconds. I've got three seconds laid out there. So that way, if I want to come into Isotope Insight to level match it at any point, I can just do this. was a time marker again let's get super granular two minutes 40 seconds 0.67 two minutes 40 seconds 0.67 so it's this thing over here so let's go into slip mode here and let's just really get make sure there's no squared off waveforms because this it, this this file could be in 32-bit and we're negating any sort of in there. Let's just make sure there's nothing, nothing is squared off, even though it is over, but still you, you, you want to give yourself headroom. You want to be wary of where these peaks are in a mix and conscious of them. So that way you can work through them. So now we know it's plus 0 0.3. I'm going to use the clip gain line and just bring it down 6.3 decibels full scale. So that way I've got a little bit of headroom to work with as I work through my chain. Um, and how you get that clip gain line is in view clip 
uh, view clip 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 uh, view clip cane line if you click that on and off you'll remove it and if you want it on which I do want it on you can click it back on and it just shows up and that's a good way to just make edits manually um, to the material there so let's let's so now we've got that up we love the track let's play it through again because I made some observations earlier on about the low end and also I made some observations about the dynamic change ups between the chorus and the verses and how we can appropriate that into the way we set our compressors so let's um let's have a listen there how's it going to end one last time to explode before the night's out Before it's lights out All right, so something I've observed there is what I was doing, you won't be able to hear this on the YouTube live stream, but I'll just bring my volume of monitoring really down low just to hear where the transients were sort of poking out there. And the kick in the low end's actually really tight. It's the snare hit which just pulls out a little bit further than everything else. And that's not necessarily a good or a bad thing. It's actually just a matter of interpreting that information and how we translate that in the master. Now. When I, when I hear a snare popping out, I think, is that embellishing and helping the music move forward? Um, if so, how? And if not, why? Now, for me, something I'm conscious about is I want that low end to be full and forward. Now, everything is relative to one another. That snare drum being slightly more forward is making the kick and the low end feel slightly more back. So dynamically, I want to do something with the compressor to just help tame the attack on that snare. Not necessarily kill it. I, I, I love the tone and the snap of it, but just to, just to bring it and gel it into the mix so that low end feels relatively big um, in a position to the snare. So what we're going to do is we're going to use um, TDR Kotelnikov. Um, this is this is a free compressor and if you haven't got it you should get it. Um, it's made by TDR um, or T TDR, Tokyo Dawn Labs I think it is who make that. Actually you know what let's just click this button here. Where's where's the, um, the love? Oh, I don't know. Anyway um, it's made by TDR. Okay there we are Tokyo Dawn Records. Sorry my apologies for the for the slip there. Um, and yeah, that's going to be our aim, just to cap that, capture that snare, and tame it into the mix. All right, let's let's um let's work through that, especially in this big section here, and we'll see how we go. Yeah, let's see how we go. Um, what you can see, you can see that low end, you can see where the snare hits, it hits directly at 245. So pretty much anything below these sub frequencies up here on the screen, I don't really want affecting my compressor. I just want it just to clamp down a little bit on the snare. So what we're gonna use is we've got the slope, so a high pass sidechain filter. And what I like to do is the way I like to set it is one octave above the fundamental. So the fundamental of this kick is sitting around that 50-ish hertz section with the bass line. Um, so let's go, 100 hertz is actually a really good starting point, but we're going to go pretty steep, not that I usually would, um, only to make sure we filter out a lot of that low end information from the compressed signal. All right, let's keep streaming that.
So what you can hear is when I click this delta signal, it shows what the compressor is taking away from the signal. So you can hear it actually just working on those snares, just taking away some of that that energy from the snare. Not, and, and I'm hoping, what I'm going to do is now, the most important thing is that I level match this. Um, and when I level match it and I AB it, that during the AB, it's giving me the net effect of that low end and the kick feeling more gelled together with the snare. So slightly fuller sound when it's level matched. And I'm going to use the louder section of the song to level match that. Um, so we're going to go here. We're going to play the signal through, get the short term um, LUFS and then compensate it um, when I actually put the compressor in again. All right, so it's a 0.4 decibel amount of makeup gain overall. Um, I'm not matching peak level, I'm matching average loudness because that to me is a more critical indicator on um, helping me differentiate what tonally is working and isn't rather than just matching it to the peak level. So let's have a listen to this before and after with this compressor on and off. <laughs> I'm down with that. That actually sounds really nice. It's actually, um, it's, it's super subtle and I don't think it needs anything major. Cause as I said, this mix is actually pretty good. And I've been, had two weeks in a row of doing live streams and the mixes that have come in have just been stellar and this is no exception. And it's a very subtle change, but it's just one change that just helps shift that perspective, at least to my ears. Um, even though we're only doing one decibel, it's, it's, it's a game reduction. It, it might seem like a very minimal thing, but it's the little things which add up over time, which make a difference. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to get back to playing it through these earlier sections. I just want to make sure this compressor isn't really, or even this, these later verses where there isn't much as much going on, just to make sure this compressor isn't really working against those sections. And I'm hoping it won't just simply because the overall signal in those sections don't look like it's going to be affecting it, but still it's always important to spot check. Find out How's it going to end One last time to explode Before it lights out Before it lights out How's it going to end You, you want to know something? I, I didn't actually realize this on my first pass. And, you know, this is why we, we always go back to different sections and, and listen through them. But the snare's even really loud in, in, in the softer section. So it this, this is a good, like, haphazard accident where this compressor is actually working um, and creating good effect and use for itself, even in the verses. So um, happy accident there, but I'm going to take credit for it. So thank you. Thank you. Yes, I'm a genius and I did that. Um, wasn't anticipating that I'll let you know that much but okay so we're, we're, we're dialed in the compressor I think that movement especially low end mid-range um, I think a few people have already commented on that during the live stream um, is, is helping that drop nicely um, something though is still missing there's a certain genocide choir to the low end which I feel could just 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 lift out this some low level and I, I use a word, word low level very specifically and you hear me use that in other videos and and other tutorials um low level detail which i feel is missing now typically what a lot of people do is when they want to try and bring out more detail in the mix is they compress it they bring it up overall volume and, and they work that way but i'm going to do something a little bit different i'm going to use um dine one 
a multiband compressor, but in parallel mode. And my aim here isn't to, to, to work on any of the juice in the low mids, mid range, upper mids or top end. It's purely in the low end. And what I want to do is I just want to compress the subs really hard on purpose so I get that detail I want out of it and then lift it and blend it slowly back in. And you only need a little bit of this, but I'll show you the net effect before and after because it's, it's going to be fun to work through this and see how this all comes together. So um, yeah, without further ado, let's, let's work through that. So a few things to note on the settings here, um, especially during this faster pace section on the outro, you, I really want this compressor releasing quickly because I just don't want the low end to feel only fuller. It still has to complement the rhythm. And usually um, this setting, which I typically use on most masters when I'm using upward compression, I'm using a slow release time, a really slow release time. So it just is a smooth sort of smear of the low end detail I'm bringing back up. But for this particular track, I went with a faster release, 75 to 150 milliseconds, just so it bounces around a little bit and keeps that elasticity in the rhythm. Um, so I sort of like that compression setting there faster attack than than usual and faster release and what i'm going to do is i'm going to bring this back down all the way down to zero and we're going to play it through and i'm going to just slowly blend this back in to where i feel like it's giving that low and that bit of oomph that that bit of you know um which i think is important because this is a really awesome track and it needs all the love and attention it deserves because um thank you ramos for sending this in this is a really cool tune so thank you again I like that. That's um, that's really cool. That is really cool. So what I'm going to do is, again, whenever we pull something together, level match it, come back, make sure what we're hearing and the changes we've made are actually worth their weight in water and we're not just sort of pissing in our hands and thinking that we're top shit when we've made a horrible mistake. So it's really important that we always, 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 always level match um, what we're doing. So let's get this out. Let's go again back to that maximum short term um, loudness marker, which we set at the start. We'll loop this three seconds, get the short term loudness, then use the then integrate and gain match it um, on the output of the leap wing dine one. All right. All right, so it was 0.2 decibels I had to bring this down because we're looking for a reading of negative 23.4. I'm pretty sure. Let's just double check I've done that correctly.
All right, it was actually negative 0.1 decibel, but that's okay. We've got it level matched, and now we can actually have a little bit of a listen to before and after using this Dyne 1, and just get a feel for whether this sort of thickening using this channel here, I'll just quickly play that. Using that blend there, if it's actually helped the track or not. And again, what I'm aiming to do is bring out the low level detail out of those subs, just thicken it up, bring a bit of that, bit of that depth in to the low end. So let's see, let's see if that has achieved that. And I hope it has when it's level match. I'm only changing it by 0.1 decibel. So I'm assuming it, it's done its job. Uh, but uh, again, always double check, no harm in doing that. You know what? I'm a horrible person because I didn't have my mic turned off while I was doing those ABs and you had mic bleed. So I'm going to have to do that again. I'm actually really sorry. That's that's noob streaming 101. Um, you know, dislike this video if that was pain in the ass to... Actually, don't dislike this video. I shouldn't say that. But, you know, I need a little bit of comical relief because not everybody's perfect and I make mistakes too. Um, I'm going to make sure I mute, this, mute my microphone this time before doing the AB. All right? All right, so you didn't have the mic bleed that time, so I'm happy I was able to AB that and show you guys what I was hearing here in the studio the first time I did that AB, and um, I'm liking it. It's subtle. It's maybe a little bit more subtle than I wanted it to be. I wanted it to be a little bit more pronounced, but every time I started blending more than negative 27 decibels, it started to... The movement in the low end started to get a little bit weird, so a little bit I'm going to accept... And as we create other building blocks throughout the chain, I'm hoping that we can flesh that out. And I think a lot of that fleshing out is also going to come in the analog domain when we go there, because I've already got a few things in the back of my mind that we can do there. Now, let's again have a listen through. And I'm going to be very conscious now of... I'm going to actually be cranking the speakers in my studio, because I like to hear how something just sounds fucking ridiculously loud is anything hurting me is anything pulling me away like I really want to just get be immersed in the sound and if anything's putting me off I'm going to make changes to that so we're going to play it back you know maybe like that much and I'm going to crank the speakers and if you're listening um, you should crank the speakers too if you're watching this you should crank your speakers and with me and we'll just all have a huge massive loud listening party disturb the neighbors um, because I really want to get a feel for you know how this is sitting at really loud volumes because that's going to really inform me of how things are sort of snapping to the to the ear um, so so let's do that and I'll make sure I mute my microphone this time so you don't get any bleed okay how's it going to end one last time to explode before the night's out Before it's lights out Yeah. 
That was juicy. I'm um, just writing. I'm muted. Oh my god. Somebody give somebody give Zep Stage a high five. Go subscribe to his channel because he just notified me that I was muted and I'm so sorry. I just went on a little bit of a rant there. Oh man. See? Noob streamer. Mate. Um, all right, b back to the juice, back to the juice. Okay, so what was I hearing? I've made a few notes here. The first one was the vocal sibilance before the drop and the reason for that is, well it's okay as it sits in the mix but when i start pushing the overall signal and it i inevitably on a track like this going to reduce dynamic range because i do want overall volume um, i might end up exacerbating that sibilance so i want to deal with that up front that's that's something in the top of my mind that i'm very conscious anyway um i'm just reading the comments and you guys are funny as hell um okay so that's the first thing vocal sibilance we're gonna have to deal with that at some point because don't exacerbate that i don't have to explain myself any further on that one the next thing is i really like the snare tone we've got it to a really good point where i'm, I'm really enjoying it it's moving in a nice way but in the same respect i'm thinking of smaller systems how it's going to translate it, it, it's textural it's got a lot of information all the way down from like 600 hertz all the way up to like eight kilohertz so there's a lot there and how's that going to translate on smaller systems is it going to sound bitey and harsh or is it going to sound lacking punch and clarity and uh, what i want to do there is just s play with and see how bringing out maybe a little bit of 900 hertz one kilohertz can help that along i'm, I'm very conscious of that and I, and I just want to explore that as well and the last thing was it's not something we may or may not do it's just something that sort of sprang to my ears with the low mids in the vocals after the drop, um, they're, they're full and that's nice and it's warm and it's lush, but is there a compromise on clarity? And that's just a question that sort of popped into my ears when I heard it. I'm like, hmm, should, should we consider working on that or not? So it, it's, it's not a yes or no. I, it's still in the back of my head, but I just thought I'd vocalize that all for you for a second time with my mic not muted. The first, the most easiest thing to do, though, is deal with this vocal sibilance. Um, and I don't want to deal with it a great deal to, to absolutely kill it out. I don't want to lose a bit of that energy, a bit of that sort of intimacy where the person is right next to the mic. But I still want to deal with it, and I still think that's important. So let's um, pull up Pro Q3. You're going to actually think it's funny, but I actually use Pro Q3's Dynamic EQ for sibilance control. And I'll actually show you how I do that, because it's, it's not all that difficult. So first thing is first, let's find the sibilance, and we're going to just isolate isolate that and get that in a loop. How's it going to end? I guess we'll never grow enough to find out. Grow enough to find out. I guess we'll never grow enough to find out. How's it going to end? One less time to explode before the night's out. Time to explode before the night. Explode before the night. Explode before. Time to explode before the night. One less time to explode. One less time to explode. Begin 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 to explode. 
all right, we found it. We know where it is. That, that that's that's one where the where the where the sibilance is quite broad range. And what we're going to do here is, if we look at this graph, we can see between about. 6.6 kilohertz and 10 kilohertz is where that sibilance is popping. So this is how I actually set it up in FabFilter Pro Q3. It's pretty rudimentary. It's pretty noobish, but it, it does the job really well, actually. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to set one EQ point at 6600 and another one at 10 kilohertz. And then I'm going to get my EQ, drop it down half a decibel. Let's just do this all in real time. Um, really squared off. Let's open that filter so it's just open across the two of them. Beautiful. Let's get that loop happening and I'm going to bring down the EQ as far as I feel is comfortable for where the sibilance should be sitting. So let's do that. Time to explode before I'm 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 to explode before Then once I've got that I'm going to set a dynamic EQ so it was -5.8 I'm going to set a dynamic EQ here, take the auto filter off and set the threshold myself. But when I set the threshold, I'm not just going to set it over the sibilance. I'm going to set it. I've got my marker here. I should have my marker here so I don't lose my spot. Sibilance. I'm going to set it where the snare hits are hitting. So where those snare hits are hitting, I'm going to set the threshold just slightly above that peak signal, then come back to the sibilance and see if it's affecting it. If it is helping the sibilance, that's good. I can just keep it as it is. If it's not, I'm going to require, be required to do a little bit of automation. So let's see how we go. Let's see how we go. Might have to do some automation because I know these louder sections, the snare gets a bit crazy. Uh, I think I'm going to have to set up automation just looking at that one moment. Time to explode. Yeah, we're going to have to set up some automation there. All right, um, but I know that their snare hits are hitting in the second verse over here, so we might just be very conscious of how we set it up around there, maybe. You know what? I reckon we're just going to have to automate it for all of our sibilance points because that snare is going to get crushed every single time this DS operates. So let's let's just set it for this sibilance point here. We'll add some automation points and we'll work with that. And that, that that's sometimes a reality. Not, not everything's going to be static. Music moves and changes throughout a piece. So we're just going to have to work with that. So let's set this threshold so it deals with the sibilance and then we'll automate it all. Find out. How's it going to end? One last time to explode before the night's out. Before it's lights out. And again, I keep unmuting and muting my microphone. I'm horrible at it. But um, okay, we we got our sibling's control dialed in there. Let's um work through automating this for ourselves. So Fab Filter Pro Q3, the dynamic range, which is basically how much compression is going to be going on. So let's go here where the drop is. One moment. Oh, we don't want it there because that's just going to cause us a bit of issues. I'll bring it up to zero. All right. Where's zero? Zero, zero, zero. There we are. There we are. Beautiful. All right. So there we are. And you just see this change here on the filter. Oh, wait, is it doing what I want? Yeah. All 
All right, so now we're just going to go through all the other points um, and make sure we just automate that in and out as we need. So let, let's just do that quickly now. Just before that snare, where he goes out, f f find out, f f f find out. Just gonna, just gonna get that sorted. Enough to find out. Enough to find out. Let's do that. Uh, bring that down. It was negative five point six or seven or so. There we are. Let's just see how that works. One less time to explode before it lights out. That was a little bit hard, that one. I actually, once everything's in and the vocal is in exposed, it's actually not too bad. And while I just put this automation line in here, I'll respond to Matthias's comment. Um, I don't know if it'd be more transparent to fix it in RX. I don't really use RX to DS that often. Um, sometimes with podcasts and whatnot, I will. Uh, but for something like this, this is just the tool I know and use and, a pretty, and, and I'm pretty cozy with working through with um yeah that, that's my response to that um yeah we might be able to try then another live stream One less time to explode before it mic again jesus christ i'm i'm just a master at muting my microphone sorry guys uh let's just do that and get rid of there that's cool all right all right so we've got a little ds sort of doing its thing there which is good which is good um i've actually got a full video um just quickly so we're going to just diverge for 15 seconds and then jump back into doing the EQ on this mix. Um, Jan, Jan, who's asked, is there any opinion on Soothe? I actually do a full reaction video to Soothe 3 versus Pro Q3. Um, and you can watch that. And I give all my thoughts and detail about that. And Soothe's a really interesting piece of technology. Um, it just doesn't fit with my workflow. And for the things I feel I can get out of it, um, isn't quite worth it from, from my experience. But with that, we're going to continue moving on because I promised 15 seconds. Then we'd actually get into EQ in this. So we've got the dynamic setup. We've got the upward parallel compression. We've got the uh, sibilance um, sort of being tamed there. Now, what I want to do is add another instance of Pro Q3. Okay. And we're going to do the EQ. And I just like doing it on a separate EQ. So that way, for automation, if I just have to turn anything on or off 
really quickly, well, I can do that at will. I can just be like, yeah, no, nah, don't want the sibilance anymore. Turn it off there quickly without having to deal with anything. So I like using a second, um, using a second EQ basically. And one of the things I was conscious of was this snare. And I did mention that. So if anybody is jumping on a little bit later into the conversation, um, the snare hits big amount actually i'll play it back so that way you guys can hear it then i'll give my comments again so we refresh and then we'll come back into the eq and just bring out that mid-range as per my comments and observations okay, okay so that's the snare hit and um it's got a big amount of frequency ranges taking up and I just feel like the mid-range, particularly around 800 to 1 kilohertz, it isn't quite taking up as much as I'd like. And the reason why I'm going to say that is because on smaller systems or compromised systems, your iPhone, laptop speakers, I feel like that snare is going to translate with with, with all that, that texture. It's going to be very, uh, like, top-endy, like, with, without the, without the mid-range presence where it really smacks through. It's got quite a bit of good low-end and low-mid presence and transient information, but in that mid-range, it's just lacking slightly. So I'm going to look at just bringing a little bit of that juice out there just to help it through. So let, let, let's have a listen. Oh, and uh, just some interesting notation here. Um, the Q factors and value um, in Pro Q3 are to the power of square root of 2, to square root of 2. So 1.4 is an octave, 2 is actually an octave. Um, just going to quickly note, my camera is going to go out at some point during this stream because the battery is going to die, but that's okay. I'll still be on here. I'll still be just finishing up this track for you guys, and that's perfectly fine. So... I just thought I'd just mention that. I sort of mixed two notes into one. Two, a factor or factor or value of uh, two on Pro Q3 is one octave of bandwidth, um, whereas opposed to normally Q's 1.4 is. So I just, just thought I'd throw that in there so people can learn just something a little bit interesting about Pro Q3. So it's to the factor of a square root of two, 1.4 is actually two. Um, so when I'm using a Q value of two, it's actually 1.4 on other EQs. Um, and that's because I want to get an octave bandwidth just to sort of get a feel for, for, for that amount of range in the frequency of that snare. Hmm, interesting. What I'm going to do is just quickly is just hide my camera and transition this back across so you have more of my screen available. Um, I'm very interested because as, as I'm monitoring or just soloing that mid-range, um, a lot of the synth is coming out. So what I'm curious to do is monitor, monitor the mid-signal and the side signal to see where a little bit more of that snare body is present as opposed to the synth that's also in there um, because I know that EQing or bringing up even half a decibel um, in that mid-range is going to make that synth come out a little bit more and it's already balanced really well I don't really want to change the tone of it I don't want to interfere with it I just want to bring a little bit of that mid-range of the snare out so let's um let's monitor the side and the mid signal and see what's up oops wrong plug-in let's do that here All right, so that, that that's that's a pretty easy observation to make. Um, right down the line in the middle, there's a lot more snare signal than out on the sides. And on the sides, there's quite a lot of the stereo information from that synth, That's the, the sound design of that synth. So um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to 
change this filter here from stereo to mid because again I really don't want to destroy the delicate sort of balance they've got um, going on with that synth I just sort of want to bring out of that mid range of the snare a little bit so let, let's work through that and see where we can get to and um, then we're going to do an AB of all my digital processing um, against a completely raw version of the mix because we've just been a being plugins coming in and out as we built up the chain but it'll be really interesting to see how it folds all back down So, to my ears at the very least, um, even though technically when I bring that mid-range out at one decibel, it feels like, it like, technically it just feels like it's poking out a little bit too far, but that dimension is actually really nice. It, it, it helps give a good amount of depth. It doesn't compromise all the effort that we're putting into com co controlling that snare with the compressor to make the low end feel a little bit thicker and all the stuff we've done there. Um, it's just a nice sort of little bit of depth that's been added um because i was sort of toying up between half a decibel or a decibel and i just prefer the decibel it just it just fleshes that out slightly slightly further um than otherwise it would so i think what the best thing to do right now is a b level match so we're going to level match it at the loudest point level match before and after and then if we like what we're hearing and it's progressed well, we'll move through the analog chain, which I'm so disappointed. I'm really sorry. I'm going to have to um, verbally explain everything because my camera batteries died midstream. So again, really sorry about that. Um, but we will progress and we'll move on and we'll move on from there. So um, let's level matches first and then, and then we'll start, we'll start moving on from there. Okay, guys. Alright, so what we have, they're actually level match because I've been gain staging the whole way through the chain. So let's play them back to back. I'm going to start from about here and play through the second verse as well. Um, and when I am clicking solo on this compare channel at the bottom, that means I am playing the before version. And when I play solo on, press solo, sorry, on this channel up the top, that is the after version. So let's play that through and again subtle changes just as a reminder of what we've done especially for people coming on newly to this stream um we've got this compressor which is just helping gel those snare hits into the mix a little bit um and we've got a little bit of upward compression on the low end just lifting a little bit of that low level detail in the subs out we've got a bit of sibilance control throughout the um verses which we've automated as well and then we've got a bit of a mid-range boost just to help that snare just pop through just 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 a little bit 
So let's let's do that AB now. We'll start with the before version. I'll flick over to the after. As I'm going, I'll just go back and forth um, as to what I'm trying to hear and decipher. So let's do that. Enough to find out. How's it going to end? One less time to explode before the night's out. Before it's lights out. Cool. I'm um, actually really enjoying what I'm hearing there. I'm so thumbs up, thumbs up from me on that one. Um, something I didn't like though, which I think is important we note, is <laughs> unfortunately the sibilance control. So this dynamic EQ is just pretty fucking. It's pretty out there aggressive. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to just dial back this threshold slightly and play it back over because. Just, just was clamping down a little bit too hard for my ears. So let's um just brought it down a little bit. Let's have another listen to that sibilance control on this first verse. One less time to explode before the night's out. Before it's lights out. One less time to explode before the night's out. Before it's lights out and One less time to ex explode Before the night's out Little bit of an accident there Happy accident though This mid-range boost Which I've made for the snare and the drops Is giving a nice bit of added pizzazz Or presence to the vocals um, Which is actually pretty flattering um, Again, another happy accident so that's cool. I'm happy that I dialed that sibilance back a little bit because it felt a little bit congested on that first pass when we were going through it. So with that said, that's nice. I'm enjoying that. Um, the AB from before to after, there's not huge, massive, massive changes because it is a good mix, but they're just subtle ones to help carry the message across on the final master. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to get this ready for the analog chain. And before I do, I actually like using a soft clipper going into my digital to analog converter. I've spoken about this in other live streams. Um, and basically what that means is I'm looking to maybe take about half a decibel to one decibel of the top of the loudest, loudest peaks um, and then gain up. So that way, when I go out into my converters, I've got a nice strong signal going through my analog chain and that's just how I roll. So that's what I'm going to do now. Um, and I like to use standard clip for that. You'll hear me typing because the mic's right on top of my keyboard, but I like to use standard clip. And the way I do this is I go to the loudest. We remember we marked out our true peak, our loudest true peak of the track. I like to go here back onto isotope insight. Let's just scroll back down, find what peak value there is, gain up to there, and then clip down about a decibel or so from there. And that's that's how I set up my... And if you're not using an analog chain, that's what I'd be doing before any limiting whenever I do use digital... do do digital only masters. So let's set that up now. Okay, and it's just as simple as that. Um, if 
I'll just explain a little bit more what's going on. So I found the peak level and then we gained up to that. Then we clip gain down. We, we put the gain down on the clip on how much inf of that information we want to actually clip. So the lower you go, that's where more clipping starts. And then I compensated the gain back up. So I'm negative one decibel full scale before I go out on my D to A. That's just how I like to set this up. It works. It gives me a nice hot signal to work from. Then I can right click here and activate my mastering chain and you'll start to hear maybe a little bit of noise get introduced um, into what you're hearing on the stream um, because I had my gain smacking on my A, A to D converter. I've just brought that down. Um, so what is in my analog chain? Again, it's really annoyed that the com camera's battery has died out here. What is there? There's the high voltage EQ6S by High Voltage made here in Melbourne, Australia. There's the Manly Verimu um, with a mid side mod, and there's a commissioned piece which I commissioned somebody to build for me a barrier port and net EQ, which is an absolute big bertha. Um, so, what we're going to do is we're going to run this through the chain. And again, I think before maybe about 20 minutes ago in the stream, um, I was cranking the shit out of the speakers. We we're listening back to it to get a feel for where everything was sitting based on what EQ moves we wanted to make. And I'm going to do the same thing. I like doing that through the analog chain. So let's all just crank the shit out of our speakers. We'll play this midsection again. Just make sure your speakers are cranked the hell. Like just crank the living life out of them. And we'll listen to this section together all in, all in unison and we'll work through it. All right. For the night's out. Before it's lights out Cool. All right. So, um, playing that back through the analog chain, it's a really good mix. As I said, it's a really good mix to start with going through the analog chain. Everything is actually in bypass when I was listening to that. Um, you might've heard me flick, um, the in and out switch on the very mirror at some point when the left and right channel went, um, in and out. Um, but I'm really liking that mix. What am I thinking now? I feel like everything from about 50 Hertz to maybe 15 kilohertz is spot on perfect tone wise however i have a little bit of luxury in the analog domain which we also have in the digital domain but i have the luxury of headroom in the analog domain which i don't have in the digital domain um, and that is that i'm able to boost the really really low subs up just a little bit just a touch just a fraction just a hair to give it a little bit more extension right down to the last frequency and the same on the top end and i'm feeling like this will benefit from it a lot so what you're gonna hear is you're gonna hear this. Just just one moment. We'll do some ASMR um, sort of stuff. Just just have a listen. I'll shut up and you guys can listen. Oh yeah, oh yeah. Those are stepped pots on the Barry Porter EQ. And what we're gonna be doing again? Cameras dropped out. I'm so sorry for that. Um, but visually, you won't be able to see it. You can you can hear this though. All right. And what we're going to do is we're going to go to the lowest frequency on the Barry Porter EQ's um, low shelf, which is 20 hertz. And I'm going to bring that up a little bit. And then same with the highest frequency on the high shelf at 19.8 kilohertz. I just want to extend, extend the bounds of or the bandwidth of these frequencies on the mix just to give it, make it feel like it just doesn't drop off at any point. Um, and as I said, the mid range is spot on perfect. And that's more a credit to the mix than what I've done in mastering. In mastering, I've made small adjustments, but it, it's sort of inherited from the mix, um, that great mid range. So let's uh, make those tweaks in this drop. I, I'm just, it's just going to be fun. It's just going to be fun and exciting to do. So let's do this.
bugger. You, you lost you lost my reaction to the end of that because I didn't unmute my mic. But that said, what I'm going to do is that was really juicy. That was really nice. I loved it. And I'm going to level match the analog chain to the original mix. And then we can slowly move that through. And then I'm going to do some stuff with the Manly Variable because I feel like it's going to benefit from a little bit of additional compression in the analog chain. All right, we've got the level match going on there. So let's play this through. Um, a being the EQ I've put in on the analog chain, which is a one decibel boost at 20 hertz with a low shelf filter and a one decibel boost at 19.8 kilohertz with a high shelf filter. That's on the Barry Porter Net EQ, um, which I've switched in. And we're gonna AB that analog version to the original unmastered, untouched version. The night's out Before it's lights us out Bro, ladies, fellas, that was fucking juicy. Let, I'm going to do that again, because if anybody joined the live stream, we're going to AB the analog EQ in against the original mix, and it's fucking, like, it's got so much more dimension, and it was only a decibel boost at 20 hertz and at 19.8 kilohertz, but this is what I'm saying, it's the subtle things which are adding up now, and fuck, that, that impressed me, um... I do this every day and that, 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 that sounded really good. That sounded so tasty. That sounded so good. Um, oh, let's do that. Let's let's just do that again. Let's just do that again and then we'll dial in the very moot again for people joining the stream. I'm so sorry. I'm so, so, so sorry the camera's dropped out because it'd be great for you to see this all getting dialed in physically um, rather than just hearing my annoying voice. So, oh, fuck. Yes, yes. Let's, let's do this because that is juicy as all hell. Let's do it. Before the night's out Before it's lights out How fucking awesome is that? That's level matched and it maintains the integrity of that original mix, which is, is, is a great, a great, great mix. But oh my God, I'm loving that. And um, I wish you could see the reaction on my face, but obviously again, I'm gonna mention that camera is a fucking cow um, for the battery dying, but it is what it is. And um, if you like that, you should probably smash the like button if you're viewing this. If you liked that before and after, smash the fuck out of the like button. Um, because that's how YouTube works. That's how we get love. Yes, chonky catkins. That is the right word. Chonky as hell. Um, but with that said, yes, let's dial in this very mood. Now, dynamically, I'm liking what is happening overall. What can this very mood do for us? Now, 
The thing with the Varimood is it's quite a slow working compressor and I tend to dial it in with pretty slow settings. Um, what I'm hoping to do and achieve with the Varimood is level out more of the macro dynamics and the micro dynamics. I'm not going for super fast compression where I'm chomping down on the attack of the, the snares and, and kicks and trying to control it to give myself headroom. What I'm actually trying to do is compress overall those louder sections just slightly down without destroying the transient detail and then allowing the compressor to sort of back off in those softer sections. So it's a smooth way of managing those macro dynamics and just overall giving me a little bit of room to bring up the program level or the program's volume level so what we're going to do is again sorry for the camera not being out i'm going to keep apologizing for that because i'm really pissed off that happened and i just don't want to get hyped up and angry about it but let's um let's do this let's us dial in this very um and what you're going to hear is when i bring it in the volume is going to drop slightly um just because of the way my input and output is dialed in on it and i'm going to change between a slow and a fast release and you'll hear me sort of clicking through if if, if you do hear any clicking through um, from the pots. Um, and I'm going to sort of try and decipher where I want that release to sort of um, be at or what they call in the very mood recovery. It's, it's, it's a recovery parameter or knob they've got there. Um, and the reason being is because in these faster sections, I'm not quite sure how a slow release is going to translate, if it's going to translate well or not. And the only way to find out is to actually do it. So we're going to get this big section on loop, try and dial this in and see where we get to. All right, let's do that. Now, again, you can't see this in the video feed because there is no video feed, but that slightly faster release, so I've got um, five stepped position on the recovery from slow all the way to fast. On the fourth stepped position, um, leaning towards the faster release or recovery on the very move, I'm finding the sustain on the bass against that low end. It just feels a little bit more natural. And I'll just play it again so that way you guys can key in to the way that bass is sustaining off the kick. Um, and just, 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 just get a vibe for what I'm listening to. Um, so I'll play that back again. And when I play it back this time, I'm actually not going to be switching up any positions on um, the very moment. I'm just going to play it all the way through so you guys can capture exactly what I'm listening to there. All right, I'm enjoying that. That sounds good. And I am saying that only because I'm hearing it as I'm doing it. And that's not a good thing because what we should be doing is again, round circle, level match, go back, AB. And as I've put this very move in, um, my level matching to this original is out simply because, um, because I'm compressing. And when you compress, you change the overall amplitude of a signal at any given stage, and that changes the overall volume. So it's important. We level match, yes. So let's do that right now. Um, we'll play the original mix, and then we'll play the after version and level match that quickly so we can A-B it and get an idea if I'm absolutely destroying this or I'm doing something good to actually help it along.
All right, we are level match now, and we're going to listen through to it before and after. And for anybody joining in the live stream, I'm, I'm not sure who's new to the live stream, who's dropped out, who's dropped in. Um, when you hit the compare channel, when I hit the solo on the compare channel, that is before. And level matched when I click the solo on the top channel here, which has all of our processing on it, that is the after. So let's have a listen through this start to it. Before the night's out. Before it's lights out That's, that sounds really good. Really, 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 really good to my ears. Um, so the changes they've made have all been thumbs up. Um, I think on last week's live stream, we started making changes throughout the chain. And when we went back to level match it, we were like, ooh, that, that sounds horrible. That sounds really, really bad. Let's give ourselves a slap over the head. Um, but today it's been all wins all the way through. Um, so what this means is now, um, I'm going to bring this back up because I'm going to be monitoring my peak value now. Um, and where's our peak value? We'll get this open here. Um, what I'm conscious of is, don't need this, we need, what do we need? We don't need a spectrogram. We need the overall loudness and the levels here because we want to get our peak value and gain up into our analog to digital converter to make some changes. All right, we're going to make, we're not, not necessarily changes, but we're going to just be getting the overall loudness. So we're going to be gaining up into the analog to digital converter, hitting the ceiling slightly, and we'll work from there. So let's, let's do that now. Just so we know, we've got about seven and a half decibels of peak headroom there. So we're going to be gaining up pretty fucking loud into this. Pretty fucking loud. So, um, yeah, let's, let's do that. Let's, let's gain up into it and see where we can go. I, I muted myself. You know what's funny? I muted myself and I was saying I don't know what the fuck I'm doing with all my streaming buttons and hotkeys and stuff, and I'm, I'm just talking into a muted mic. But anyway, um, that said, um, I was able to gain... I went to two decibels over zero into the converters without any audible distortion at the loudest point. That's good. Again, if you had a camera here, I could show you exactly how I'm doing that. But um, anyway, so basically that's the gain into my A to D converter. Um... And I've went two decibels hot into it um, over over zero, and we're not hearing any audible distortion there. Let's just play that back again, and just so you guys have reference, I'll bring up Insight with that as well. And yes, we do have some overs there, but that's okay because we're going to still set some limiting at the end of this and work through it. Um, so, and actually with that said, let's actually do that and set up our limiters. Now with the limiters, the way I like to set them up is I like having the, I don't know why, but this just with half a decibel going into my limiters, the, the ozone, um, limiter is actually not a 
bad limiter at all. Um, so I always have that as just a default sort of setup. But the sort of juicy stuff and what you're going to have to be doing, and please, I hope you are listening right now, is uh, I like to use a technique by Mike Stavra. I've talked about in other videos, in, uh, in other tutorials on how I set my limiter. Basically, I crank the shit out of the game absolutely crank the living life out of it so make sure when i do play i'll give you a bit of warning turn your volume down because it's just gonna crank the shit out of your speakers i don't want to be blowing up people's speakers um yes i i i, I gain no 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 i gain I, I gain there is an input gain on my a to d converters costa um just thought i'd answer that for you um if if i've skipped a, around there cost is just asked in the comment section you gain on the comp no I, I gain on the input to the a to d right at the very end um anyway back to this um lots of gain on the limiter 30 plus decibels and i do this so when i dial in my attack and release i can hear i can hear in detail how it's affecting the dynamic information of what the limiter is doing okay that is precisely what i'm doing um so yeah what we're going to do is we're going to i'm just going to write a little response here to costa because costa's a legend he's asking awesome questions but my brain is like pretty fluffy it just goes from one thing to the next so sorry guys i'm just going to respond to here um input of the converters analog no worries um all right let's fold back into what we're doing okay so yes mike stavro if you search mike stavro compressor technique on youtube on google sorry you'll find it if you look at my how i said attack and release on limiters video on youtube you'll find how i would do this exactly but basically i want to hear what the hell this limiter is doing to the dynamics of my mix so let's play this big loud section here where the compressor is just going to go fucking mental and we'll dial in our attack and release now, I'm going to press play. Make sure you've turned your, your volume down, all right? Turn your volume down. I'm giving you enough warning. If you have not turned your volume down, you deserve to have your ears blasted off because I've told you, turn the fucking volume down before I start pressing play on this because it's just going to get fucking loud. It's just going to get hugely loud. So just make sure you've turned down. You've turned it down just a bit, just a bit or a lot, but just make sure you turn it down somewhat, okay? All right, I'm going to press play. Let's do it. you guys can hear what was going on there um what i'm going to do is just 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 so audio example for you guys to really latch in to my ears and what i'm doing is i've got two versions i've got a, a version and the a version is i've actually got one uh, point one millisecond of look ahead because the low end is so big it's causing the limiter to break up completely so i need to have that look ahead that's a non-negotiable i tend to avoid using look ahead but when i need it well I got to use it. It's just like you've got the tool there. I've got to use it. Um, the attack I've sped up a little bit to 100 milliseconds just to just to get that limiter working a little bit harder, a little bit sooner, not breaking up quickly. And the release I've got at 125 milliseconds. I was actually anticipating going as slow as 200 milliseconds, but 125 is okay. It tends to the faster the release, the more quicker it's going to start breaking up on your limiter. But I've got enough look ahead there to compensate for that. So. What I'm going to do is I'm going to flick between the A version and the B version, where it's just my default settings in. And you can hear how the refined, um, the refined, actually that should be in transparent mode, the refined A version is moving with the music and the, ref and the unrefined B version is distorting and working against the dynamics of the music, especially when you're gaining up 30 decibels. So again... I'm going to be bringing the, I'm going to be playing this. It's going to be a plus 30 decibels again. You better be ready for it. You better have turned your speakers down. Okay. Turn them down, 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 down. All right. That's, that, that's just the way it is.
cool. You, you, you can evidently hear that. Like, simple, to the point. We know what's going on. Um, and with that said, what we're going to do is we're going to bring this back down. I've got my ceiling set at negative 0.2. I'm going to bring it down, bring it up to 0.2. Um, and then we're going to start gaining up our limiter to the point where we get about maybe one decibel of gain reduction in this loudest spot. I might just even loop this loud section here so that way we can slightly gain up. And then I'm going to just stack them a little bit. We're going to just get a bit stacking, a bit cracking, a bit stacking. We're going to, we're going to move these um, across just to give us a little bit more juice. And I think that's important. All right, so let's get moving on that. You know what? I don't think my computer's loving all the oversampling, so I'm just going to bring the oversampling on the clipper down a little bit, just to give me a little bit more room to wiggle with here, alright? And let's get back into it. You know what? I've never run a stream at the same time as doing as doing um, a master. So I'm assuming all like, I just go crazy on the oversampling all the time because I don't like the sound of aliasing folding back under, you know, under compression and processing. So um, let's just hope this, this, this gets our CPU in the right ballpark because we've been stacking shit on here and um, I'm hoping it's, I'm hoping we can hold out for the rest of the stream. So sorry about that guys. <laughs> You know what? How horrible am I? I've got, I've got the mic playing at the same time, so it's probably sounding like it's all distorting and meddling together. That's um, that's a definite slap over the wrist. Sorry, guys. Um, let's play this, and I'll make sure I turn my mic off. Actually, you know what? Before we do that, let's just quickly level match it to the original. Um, and that way, at least while we're while while we've got these limiters getting set up, we can we can have a little we can be a little bit conscious of what's going on um, with our overall loudness and seeing how we actually are changing the the composition or the makeup of this mix
All right, we've got that level match now, which is good, and we will play it through a being before and after to make sure this limiter hasn't absolutely destroyed all the good juicy bits of this mix, which we have to lay a lot of credit to um, to Ramos on this because he's done a great, great job mixing this. So let's um, let's have a listen through. Um, we'll go back in this part of the verse and. AB and again for anybody joining there's actually quite a few viewers um, compared to the start of the stream when I click solo on the compare channel that is before when I click solo on the after channel that is after I will give a caveat to the level matching because I've affected the overall macro dynamics that means the volume between different sections of the song throughout this master where ie the verse going into the chorus during the softer sections my version may sound a little bit louder so be conscious of that I haven't done that on purpose it's just the makeup of this mix and I've made one game change here to level match them as best as I can during the loudest sections but just be conscious of that as I go into and play it okay let's go how's it going to end one less time to explode before the night sets out before it's lights out Cool. Um, I'm enjoying that a little bit. I feel like um, some of this limiting is a little bit too slow. The 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 attack of the um, especially against some of the snares is is starting to break up just just slightly to my ear. Um, so I want to use a little bit more look ahead on this, especially for that last section and a b it um, because. Overall, really great. Like the AB is awesome, but I'm not too happy about that. And I'm just going to bring the look ahead from 0.1 millisecond to 0.2 millisecond. Might not seem a lot to many, but to my ears, I, I should be able to hope I can hear a difference being made with that look ahead change. So let's go back to AB, this back section of the track, and, and, and see how that creates effects. Cool. I think that smoothed it out just as much as it needed to be. Um, there's a little bit of a balance and a sort of game of compromise which is being made on my master. And that is the mid-range I brought into that snare. Um, the original mix has a nice light airiness to it on the snare, which, which is really beautiful to hear um, in the original mix. But again, I made, a, I made a very distinct decision to just bring out a little bit more mid-range rather than enhance the 
upper end of that snare in the digital realm simply because I was more concerned with the translation of it. And that, that, that's something where if I sent this across to my, if, if, if Ramos was my client and I sent this across to him and he came back and said, hey, the snares change a little bit in tone, I would know exactly where and how that's happened. And that's this EQ here. And I'd be happy to make that change to bring it back. Or I might even be so conscious of it that when I go to print the master, I actually print out two versions, one with that EQ in and one with it out, only because there are some good characters and qualities in the original mix, which haven't been lost, but maybe dulled in opposition to enhancing other elements of the mix, like the low end, making it thick and making it big. Um, and again, that's, that's sort of a conversation, a dialogue that you go back and forth with your clients and have. Now, that said, what, what is really important and what everybody loves when it comes to mastering is how fucking loud is this? And it's not a super overly the top, over the top loud track because there's, there's quite a bit of dynamics, there's quite a bit of movement, but let's, um, let's for the sake of the game, let's just bring this volume knob back up and let's actually monitor what the hell is going on. You'll hear a little bit of noise in the background from all those limiters going on, but that'll soon disappear once I start playing. All right, let's do this. Let's play it. So overall, it gets it gets relatively loud. It gets up to almost 10 um, LUFS at certain points. Now, again, then you've got this game of compromise. Now, I'm using a series of limiters, some compressors, a little bit of upward compression here with the Dyne 1, a little bit of soft clipping, um, all in little increments, and always to the benefit, and that, that, that's a really important question, uh, uh, not question, a very important statement to make, is always to the benefit of the overall sound of the track. And the reason why it's important to state that is because this mix isn't exactly super, this master, sorry, because it, it, it's, it's, it's at its processed mastered stage now, isn't the loudest thing in the world. It's not fucking chopping people's heads off. That said, if Ramsey came back from this master and said, Nick, it's sounding great, loving the tone of it, loving how it's sitting, but I'd love to hear this louder. Well, then that's something we would explore. And it's, I'll be honest, I really want to explore that with you, but this live stream's almost went for two hours and I have quite a bit of mixing to get to today. So what we're going to do is I'm just going to quickly show you my printing chain. So how everything gets printed off and delivered to my clients. So that way you guys can actually see the process completely, completely and utterly start to end. Now, what we've got here, actually, I don't need that send. Let's um, let's just get rid of that send there. What we've got here is we've got a few little bits and pieces operating here. We've got um, some high-res printers. I call them high-res printers because those are the things I end up exporting at uh, the native uh, 441, no, 4824 or 9624, depending on where I'm starting my session at. And these bust out the signal through these um, limiters, these final limiters. And these limiters aren't actually doing any limiting. They're just setting the ceiling with the true peak limiter, one at negative zero decibel true peak, and another one at negative one decibel true peak. And those are so I can print a version, a high res version with the zero decibel true peak and no overs, and another version with a negative one decibel true peak, no overs, which then I was... Um, uh, then I will, uh, with this negative one decibel true peak, um, put it in an Apple Digital Masters droplet and then audition it as an AAC in audio editor to make sure there are no overs. And, I'll sh and that's really important for Apple Digital Masters or Mastered for iTunes that it passes that quality control test. So what we're going to do is let's actually put this to print. Um, it's going to take three minutes. So make sure you go make yourself a coffee. And we'll get this to print. Where are we? There we are. And let's just print this master start to end as a final thing. And we'll see where we go from here. All right, let's do it. I shut you out before I realized. That's why my Sundays never feel right. No need to pray for forgiveness. 
called it quits before the race begun That way we couldn't see the fights to come Go east to stay in the fiction I failed to learn how to live How's it going to end? I guess we'll never grow enough to find out How's it going to end? One less time to explode before the night's out Before it's lights out Alright, so there we are. Um, overall, that's that's the full print. Those are the, th the two prints we need. And what I probably should have done is I probably should have named these tracks so the native name of them were the track names. So let's just quickly do that. Um, Ah, I wasn't, you guys were seeing me do things and I was explaining every single thing I was doing, but you guys didn't hear anything I was doing. So basically I'm just going to quickly top and tail this. Once it is topped and tailed, then I'll make the exports. I'll show you how I audition it for Apple Digital Masters. And then you get a final deliverable um, as a project. So let's do that. Let's go straight to the start. Let's, let's just play this through. Oopsies. I want to hear this. Get rid of input audio, input monitoring. Get rid of the record function. Let's do that. Starts a little bit too quick for my liking, so we're just going to just bring that out a little bit, just a little bit. All right, guys, can you hear me? Head of Studio says my mic cut out. Again, a big slap over the head for me for doing that. Sorry, guys. Um, and make sure you smash that like button as we get towards the end of this stream where I'm going to show you how I'm exporting everything. It's really good people like this video and, and are all on board doing that. So let's, um again, let's make sure we get this top properly. The top being the start or the head of the track. Uh, you know what? There's, there's a little bit of... um.
There's a, I want a little bit more leading because those chimes come in pretty soon and it feels like a little bit too much information too early. Let's just bring that to there. Oh, how smooth and lush is that? That is that is as tasty as you can get. Tasty, tasty, tasty. All right, now the back end, the back end. Let's do this. As we're going to end. Ooh, what's going on there? Did I? No, no, I didn't cut anything off. It's just, that's, that's a really good natural fade already there. So I'm just going to fade off a little bit of that, um, a little bit of that analog noise. And let's just play that back again. As we're going to end. Beautiful. That is good. I like that. So let's um, grab that. We'll zoom out. We will consolidate them. And then what we'll do is, what I'm going to do is because uh, when I export this, I don't want to export all these files for now, but what I want to do is I want to show you how we make an Apple Digital Master. So this one should have a negative true peak of around negative one decibel. So we're going to export this at the native bit depth and sample rate of my session and of the file deliverable. So let's choose where to throw that. Let's um, throw this into, let's just throw this onto the desktop only because um, my projects folder has all the names of my clients first and last. And I just want to protect their private information. I don't really want it, you know, splurted out on a YouTube video. Um, so let's do that. Let's export that and we'll go to our desktop. Let's go to desktop. There we are. There's the file. So what we're going to do here with this file here, the first thing is we need to make sure the file that we're delivering for master for iTunes or Apple Digital masters has a peak level of negative one decibel. Um, so our true peak level shouldn't exceed or shouldn't, it shouldn't technically be clipping, but negative 0. Is negative 1.07. So that's good. That is important. That is what we like. Um, and again, what we're going to do is we're going to take that file again and we're going to put it into the Apple droplet and we're going to begin a conversion, which is going to give us our, um, the, the actual uses the codec that the Apple Digital Masters uses. So we're going to do that. Then we're going to take it. Okay, it's been completed. We're going to take that file. We just pull that back into the audio editor and make sure there were ne not necessarily any overs in it. So let's go waveform stats again. And there are no true peaks over zero. Perfect. So that is how you just quality control and double check an Apple Digital Master. Um, and that is the process of mastering this track. So if you've watched this, I'm going to keep this, 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 this actually, this video up live. So I'm actually not going to take it down like the last one. The last one I took down because my mic was just absolutely shot out of hell. And I didn't want to keep that sort of quality recording of my voice out on YouTube. Um, but this one I'll keep up. So here's the deal. If you want to watch this video, you, after this live stream, you can go back to the start. I'll spend some time maybe on a lunch break, putting in time markers for each of the things I'm doing throughout this master. And you can enjoy it. And I'm going to do it again next week. So remember, smash the like button. Lots of likes is really good um, for YouTube's algorithm. And if you want to submit a track for me to do in Mastering Roulette, let me know. I'll send you a link to the Google form and we can all rock and roll from there and you might be selected and we'll work from your track. All right, until next week, take care and enjoy all right thank you again thank you so so much and i'm going to end the stream now take care